Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kieran, I'm a junior doctor and a comedian working in Manchester. Today we are watching episode two of the new BBC series, This Is Going To Hurt, which is based on Adam Kay's best-selling book about his life as a junior doctor in the hospital. We're gonna be checking out and comparing it to what it's like being a doctor today. We've checked out episode one, we've reacted to the book a few times. I've heard this episode is quite juicy, so let's get into it. Okay, that's enough. Let's open her up again. Here they're furiously looking through all of the swabs and this is something that always happens in surgical theatre. Use swabs in theatre for mopping up bodily fluids but mostly blood and one of the things you need to make sure is that the number of swabs you've used in the operation are the same number of swabs coming out because if they aren't the same then clearly a swab has been left somewhere where it shouldn't have been aka inside the body. So they do this count before and afterwards and at the moment they're struggling to find one of the swabs. We can't find one of the swabs that we used in the cesarean, so we're going to have to check that we haven't left it sort of inside you. And it won't dissolve? Over the next six or seven thousand years. <laughs> uh, so from what I understand, a swab left inside a person can be a source of infection. So obviously something you want to try and avoid. And here, if they can't find the swab, they're gonna have to open her up and have a look to see if it's still inside. Not ideal. He's still struggling with the guilt from episode one. He accidentally missed a preeclampsia and this baby had to be delivered really early. A baby being delivered early is at much higher risk of loads of complications. Lots of things are not developed fully, including the brain, including the lungs, especially this baby. So I think it's 20 something weeks. So it's gonna be in hospital for quite some time receiving treatment before it's able to go home. You look like you haven't slept. No, I've had to cut sleeping out. It's an unnecessary distraction from these exams. This is how I feel literally right now. So I'm studying for my exit GP exams, an exam called the AKT, which is basically all of the knowledge of all of medicine that a GP has to know, which is quite a lot. The difficulty is trying to revise for an exam that's got so much content whilst you're working full time. So she is spending her time outside of the hospital revising. She's learning in work, she's learning outside of work. There is literally no escaping it. And this is me right now. And I have done a uh, quarter of anatomy, so that's what, a leg? He's doing biopsies on every freckle on a patient's ass just in case it's some rare case of Japanese melanocytic. Because he's made a mistake and he missed something because he was in a rush and he was being a bit careless, he's now super vigilant about absolutely everything. And you see this in people. I've seen it in more senior doctors before who are very, very, very vigilant at looking for certain things and sometimes at the expense of time. I want to admit you to the ward, get you around to theatre as soon as we can. And Are you certain then? Not 100%. So this is the thing about when you explain anything in medicine, is that you are basing this on experience and probability. The symptoms that someone got are likely to be something, and this is how we investigate for it. So when people say, are you definitely sure it's that? You can never say, yes, I'm 100% sure it's that. Because you can't be, unless you've got more evidence, more pieces to the puzzle, that's what's gonna give you a clearer picture of a diagnosis. He's basing what he's doing right now just on the clinical picture, so the history, and the examination and his experience. It's really not period pains. Look, we're pleased you're being cautious. I'd be cautious too if I'd nearly killed one of my patients at your stage. We're at the same stage, Julia. But what if it is ovarian torsion? Send her home. So Adam is a registrar, which means he's a senior doctor in the hospital, the level before you are a consultant. This other colleague of his, Julian, is also a registrar, and they are sort of competing together because they want to do a lot of the operations to get the experience, and the consultant is the one supervising him. So you see this in hospital with surgical trainees all trying to get on top of each other to be the top of the pile to get that experience. It's pretty cutthroat. It's not exactly as, you know, enemy-like as this, but it's a similar situation. The other thing is he's got concerns about this patient, but his colleagues who have not seen the patient before are saying, it sounds fine, send her home. So now he's got a decision about what he thinks is best to do. Why have you done this? What? Welded a laptop to a Zimmer frame. No, they've replaced all the ward computers with computers on wheels. <laughs> we actually have these computers now, so this change they made is still implemented now. All the computers are on wheels, which is kind of pointless because if they're not plugged in for about five minutes, they die. They may as well just be normal computers at a desk. Let's get the cardiology doctors to review you, just to be on the safe side. Really? But we've had no positive test results. I don't think... 
I mean, yeah, of course. This is the pain of being a junior doctor in hospital. The most junior doctor is that she's got senior colleagues wanting to make referrals to specialties, even though there's normal bloods, normal test results, and she doesn't think it's an appropriate referral. However, a more experienced doctor is saying to her, I want this to happen. So she's now in this situation where she has to do it, but she doesn't think it's quite right. I've got a ward full of patients with actual heart issues and her pain was clearly non-cardiac. What would your registrar say if they knew you'd done this? All I can do is apologise. What's your name? Shruti. That was extremely harsh, especially from a fellow Brown brethren. This is basically, she's made this referral which the cardiologist has come, said it's inappropriate, and now she's got in trouble for it and she didn't want to throw Adam under the bus, her senior colleague. You know this role that she's fulfilling in the hospital now, this senior house officer, which is sort of like, you're not a brand new doctor, but you're also not a senior doctor, is the same thing I've been doing for a few years. And you do get dragged around a lot. The senior doctor comes round, you have to do a ward round whenever they feel like it. You have to do things like write in the notes, like order blood tests, review blood tests, a lot of the admin stuff, but don't make a lot of the decisions. And you can see that from the look on her face. Get me a spot in emergency theatres now. So this is the patient that earlier he suspected that something was wrong and his colleagues told him, no, you need to send this patient home. There's nothing wrong with her. But now he's changed his mind and he's going against what other people are saying. Really, this isn't the best way to go about it. He should really talk to his consultant and say, look, I am sure something is wrong and ask that consultant to see the patient rather than just saying, you know what, I'm gonna do what I want, be a maverick and you know, try and save the day. Bavarian torsion, starved and ready. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, that's the one. Starved and ready, he says. So being starved is actually an important part of going to theatre. So that's why before an operation, you wouldn't eat in the morning or wouldn't eat in the afternoon before an operation because there's a risk of what we call aspiration. So when you go under, so when you have a general anaesthetic, there's a risk of contents from the stomach coming up and then aspirating and going down the wrong way, down the trachea into the lungs. Please. Right, place your bet. So what he's doing now is keyhole surgery and what we can see is two ports inside the abdomen. The first port has got a camera in it. So where he's looking, he's, you can see he's not looking at the body, he's actually looking at the screen. That's where one of the cameras is. And on the other side, he's got an instrument that can do lots of different things, include grasp and cut and lots of different neat stuff. The advantage of this is you're not making a great big incision. You're going in and doing everything laparoscopically or keyhole, so much less trauma. Oh, and here they are. Great, right on cue. Get out of theatre, Adam. Shruti, you did the right thing calling me. Right, scrub in, get this closed up. Camera off, I'll deal with you afterwards. There's some free fluid in the abdomen, something's going free on. Free fluid inside the abdomen is usually a marker of inflammation or that there's something happening inside. So even though the ovary looks normal, what can sometimes happen is that it can twist and untwist, so it's like an intermittent torsion. So I wonder if that is what is going on. Because that what they were worried about is an ovary twisting or an ovarian torsion. So put another port in. Now he's putting another port into another keyhole port and the consultant is talking him through an operation that he has not much experience in. But again, this is the way you learn, especially in surgery. Van Hagen, the preeclamptic 25 weeker. Yeah, a bit of bad news, I'm afraid. The mum's lodged a complaint. You're not gonna lose your job. Just might make it harder to get the next one. Complaints in the NHS can last a really, really long time. And he already has a lot on his plate and now this is another thing that's happening on top of it. So extremely, extremely stressful for him. Adam is sat at a piano at home, still having flashbacks of everything that's going on. I think this is a bit of a play towards Adam Kay's actual life because he was a pianist, he played piano, and he was in a group called the Amateur Transplants. So he was really into his music and they made really funny songs about you know, working in hospital and doctors. And number two is that he experienced this trauma, this emotional trauma of experiencing something go wrong in the hospital. And that's one of the reasons that he left the profession. If you are new, make sure you subscribe so you can check out other episodes. Drop me a suggestion if you want to see something else. And if you haven't seen the book review, maybe check out this video here. <laughs>